phone lines now to speak to Ahmed Ibrahim, who is Deputy Minority Chief Whip and Member of Parliament for Banda. Honorable, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, Martin. Thank you for having me. Well, some of uh, you know, those who watch the proceedings argue that the minority's grounds for the censure of the finance minister may be falling flat um, following the kinds of answers he gave to the questions or the seven uh, issues raised against him. How do you respond to this? To begin with, Martin, let me say a very good afternoon to your cherished listeners and viewers as well. Those who are of that opinion may be surprised when we get to the plenary and the report appears before Parliament. I'm saying this simply because the most critical aspects of the censure motion grounds were not answered. And they were not answered. I'm not surprised, maybe whether it was because of the limited duration that was given to the committee to present its report. And that is why most of this, these were not answered. You remember the one, the, that aspect of constitutional breach on statutory payments, the minister was not able to answer it well because the constitution has been breached. And I'm saying this in relation to the releases to the district assembly common fund. Out of 4.8 billion, the minister released only 750 million. Meanwhile, Article 252 of the Constitution says the minister should release the District Assembly Common Fund in quarterly installment. So something that you have to release in quarterly installment, if it happens that for about six years you are owing about 4.8 billion and you release only 750, meaning you are owing is in arrest with some full about six quarters. Mm. So, meaning 252 has been breached. Then you come to the conflict of interest. I was surprised when the committee came at quoting the legalities of the conflict of interest issue. And because of that, they said the minister should not answer those questions. Well, the minister came to parliament and answered that his company, the Data Bank, Mm -hmm. has benefited from loan transactions, commission on loan transactions of about 159 million Ghana cities. If he came to parliament open, nobody wrote it for him. He came to, Kolken Oforata came to parliament and answered that. Right. So there is clear evidence of conflict of interest. By the day where the committee was using legal technicalities by saying that, oh, it doesn't lie within parliamentary jurisdiction to probe into conflict of interest issue, and that issue go to strike. So it is not like the minister did not benefit or his company did not benefit from the mm. loans the minister contracted. The minister did benefit. The minister came to parliament and answered in the affirmative. Okay, so, so honorable, it means that for lying. you... Of the seven, um, um, uh, the seven key issues or the grounds that were raised against him, the two that he was al he was not allowed to answer are the ones that you thought that if he had spoken to, he probably would have um, implicated himself. Is that the point you make? Because you say he didn't answer some of them. Which ones did he not answer? And how come you get the feeling that those answers probably would not necessarily you know, give him uh, a then, free way to go. Then, then, then you come to the National Cathedral, where the minister dodged by saying that he took the money from the contingency vote. And it is from other government obligations. The minister spoke as if he was talking to, excuse me to say, illiterate. Mm. This is a parliamentary committee, the parliament that gave you the contingency vote. And you told the committee that the parliament that it is emergency fund. And the contingency for vote is emergency fund. And when we talk of other government obligations, the other government obligation budget is referred to as statutory fund, statutory payment. Mm. So is the National Cathedral now a statutory payment? Alfred, if you wouldn't mind, I will refer you to 
the report of the parliamentary committee on other government obligations. Okay, uh, Honorable, we'll, we'll get into the details of that, but for lack of time, maybe you just indulge me for the next two questions. Be, per the comments you're making, are you questioning how the minority on the committee posed the questions or the kinds of answers you were expecting was not what you got? Because you had, this was a bipartisan committee and you had well-represented minority people there who had the concerns that were raised by the minority for which reason they wanted the minister uh, censured. So is it that they didn't do the work as expected? Alfred, you remember I started by saying that they did not have ample time. You saw how they were rushing. Okay, they so were time. giving just seven, seven days to present their report. So they were in the form of rushing. And you could see when questions were asked how they were, uh, the co-chair were pushing them, honorable member, you are finishing. Mm. So it's like if they were giving ample time, more questions would have been asked. But put that one aside. Mm. Ghanaian should be of the opinion that the committee work is not a finality. The committee is here to report to plenary. Right. And it's plenary that we are going to vote to take a decision on it. So let nobody think that because the committee, the minister came to parliament and deceived the public mm. by saying that he used statutory funds to pay for the national cathedral, which was not budgeted for. Okay. And because of, the, because of that, he has an escape route to go. No. Because the contingency vote is a statutory payment and it is emergency fund. Right. And, it, the, and every expenditure item in the other government obligation is stated. Okay. So when we give you, like 2021, we give the minister 80 billion to finance other government obligations. Mm. Martin, who will give you 80 billion with that, the breakdown of how lie item that is going to be spent? It All is right. not like that. Maybe, maybe certainly it's part of the deliberations that would happen when the final report comes to the plenary. But on the back of that, what are your expectations? We know that the seven-day uh, ultimatum given them or the seven-day period given them elapses tomorrow. So they are expected to present the report before the House. What are your expectations or the minority's expectations? My expectation is the that report? the minister will go. Sorry? Man expectations when the report is presented to Parliament is that the Minister of Finance will be fired. Mm. And you are sure you will get the majority's uh, consent in, in pushing through this motion? So don't forget that the majority also came to say that they also have their reasons for firing him. Okay. Even though they disagree with our reasons, but they have their results, their reasons for firing him. So okay. both sides have resolved that the Minister of Finance must be fired. And that is why I'm of the firm conviction that the, whether the Minister for Finance is allowed to answer the conflict of interest questions or not, he will mm. be fired. All right. Thank you so much, Honorable. Certainly, we'll be coming back to you.